Please be advised that Little Miss Recap contains adult language. Can you imagine looking like her and thinking you aren't pretty? Good God. I mean, you know, I'm basically a meatball on two day fix at this point <laughs> over here with a wig. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, and welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where we told you putting a bunch of drunk people on a pontoon boat was not a good idea. <laughs> no, no, it was not. Between hangovers, my fear of people getting seasick, and people behaving badly, not good. Not Guys, good. My name's Amy Archer. I'm your host for this shit show, and <laughs> I am joined today by the lovely Amanda lipnack Raydell. Hello, Amanda. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, friends. Hello, friends. Whenever you're listening to this, I realize I say good morning because Amy and I record yes, in the morning, but we do. You might not be listening to this in the morning, so it I'll might just... be the middle of the Hello. night. It might be. Hello, welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome. So this was quite the show today, and I, I had a theory. Okay, hear me okay. out. Okay, <clears throat> talk to what me. What if goose. what if Matt Sharp was in charge of House of Villains? Because I don't think that's a Matt Sharp joint, is it? It is not. It is not okay. a Matt Sharp joint. Okay. I say we need to put Matt Sharp in charge of it. And we need to have Ed. Okay. Asuelu. Okay. Jesse. Yes. Cody Brown. <laughs> yes. We'll just pull him out into the Matt Sharp universe. That's fine. Yes. Yes. If we get Jesse, do we also get Tom? I no, I don't think Tom is as evil as Jesse. Okay, okay. I yeah, no, Tom I don't think Tom is as evil as Jesse. But I don't think he's Tom a sucks, but he's not as evil as Jesse. I, I'll give you that. He's not yeah. he's not pretending to leave hashtag lu- luxury life all over the world. Correct. Yeah. So what do you think of those four? And what women could we throw in there? Oh, what women could we throw in? We could throw in Lita, except she's in prison. Oh. <laughs> or sorry, she's in jail. <laughs> can't can't have Lita at this point, but we could. Yeah, good yeah. at one point. Uh, let's see who else could we have? Who else was really terrible women? Yeah, uh, not many terrible, terrible women. Uh, although I'm sure people will be screaming right now. Yeah, like, um, maybe Danielle. Oh, she's not, yeah. She was, was she terrible or was she just really dumb? Oh, she's pretty terrible. She came she's for our Maddie, terrible. don't forget. Uh, oh, no. I was thinking um, Danielle of Danielle and Mohab. No, oh. Danielle of Danielle and Johan. Absolutely, 100%. Yes. Okay, 100%. 100%, yes. yes. Anybody who comes for Matt or Jake, forget it. They're going yeah, to no, they're, you're dead to us. Um, mm-hmm. Lita, Danielle. Oh, there's just not as many terrible women. But there are some. Ooh, well, you did. You, you did. Did you watch Before the 90 last season? Yeah. Violet. Oh, Violet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Violet. She mm-hmm. sucked. And I'm obviously gonna... Anfisa has to. Except I don't think Anfisa is terrible. I just think she's. Anfisa is just like an independent woman who's uh, Getting the outspoken. Done. Mm-hmm. Getting the job done. Isn't it funny that we can't think of any pieces of shit? I mean, I would put Robin Brown there, but I'm too afraid that would make Cody too happy. Yeah, no, to- Cody, Cody. Cody would enjoy that. Yeah. So we can't have her. Guys, um, come at us with who you would put in this villain show because I think we need to do a match art version of it. It's yeah. held in a warehouse in the Bronx. They don't get like a nice Highland or a mansion. No, 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 no. We're not going anyplace fancy Mm-mm. for these motherfuckers. They're they're gonna be Yeah. Yeah. We're they're, gonna throw them in. Yeah. They're gonna be suffering. And I wanna see this and I wanna see I think I wanna see Ed like just edding. Around Cody Brown. I want to see him like trolling Cody Brown. Can you imagine Ed and Cody Brown in the same room? I don't know if they could be there. I don't know if it's like a matter antimatter thing. Oh, yeah. I don't know true. if like there's too much narcissism mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. one space. Explode. That's going to bust. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you do you remember? Did you always watch? Did you ever watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I've never watched it, which is ridiculous. I know. I know. <laughs> it's so great. I know. I know. I need to work on this. There's a character on there that's Dee and Dennis's cousin. They call her Gail the Snail, and they throw salt at her, so she'll stay away from them all the time. And I feel like that when I see Ed. Like, I just want to throw salt at him and make him go away from me. He is very slug-like. Mm-hmm. He's he very slug-like. He shows his ass in this episode. You know, if any part of us thought that there might be some level of Ed something nope. Ed- nope, 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 nope. no 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 
All of that <laughs> you got erased. Come today. for my crawfish fuck boy. <laughs> crawfish fuck boy. We really need someone to like make a little cartoon of a crawfish. And, crawfish fuck boy. and I think we just wear it around and see if we can make it be a thing. <laughs> sort of like thing. stop trying to make fetch happen. We're going to try to make crawfish fuck boy happen. <laughs> Except after next week, we're not talking about Crawfish Fuckboy no, for a while. No, we're not, guys. This is the second to last, and I'm upset that it's ending. This is the penultimate episode. That's another one of my favorite vocabulary words. I like words. it, too. I like it too. I, yeah, I'm sad. I like this. I do, too. I like this a lot. I understand I some folks aren't into it, but I'm super into it. And if we never had to have HEA again, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In, in and this is the replacement, sign me up. So, guys, if you haven't listened already... Um, Stephanie and I are doing Married at First Sight and we started already. Yes. Now, and where do I watch Married at First Sight? So Married at First Sight is on Lifetime. Oh, I don't know so if I get that. you watch on the Lifetime app or you could buy the season on Amazon, which is what I do. Okay. Or, you know, I don't know, probably various other places. Okay. But, mm-hmm. Got it. Because I was looking yeah. last night to try to add a recording reminder to my YouTube mm-hmm. TV and I don't know if I get Lifetime. It's on Lifetime. Yeah. Look. Which is a strange choice. That is a strange choice. Because it is the same production company as Love is Blind. Okay. Like, let's get the to the let's just get to the TLC, okay? Let's just yeah. put it on TLC and let's get, get I mean the learning channel is where we all go to die. And I feel like maths is is pretty dying. It's not dying. dying as a franchise, but like it's pretty trashy. Oh so. it's it's dying <laughs> as a franchise because it's so boring. Mm, okay. They every episode is three hours long. Nothing happens. Like, come on, people. Did you so, see my comment on that one couple? Yes, Orion and Lauren. So the they reason look like they, they come from different eras of time. I don't know what's happening here. The reason they match them is she is very into her culture. Okay. And he is too. And he's native. Okay. So he's okay. Navajo and Apache. And he's very into his culture. He's okay. indigenous. Okay. And she is too. She is, she calls herself bliggity bliggity black. <laughs> What does that mean? I, I don't feel I don't like know, as a white woman I, I can ever say means, that. But it's kind of cute. And she, cute. that's what she calls herself. And okay. she's like, I'm very into being black, black culture. You know, I'm very proud of it. So she's really into it. And they they match them because they're both into their culture. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's kind so. of a reach, but okay. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And they're both... Okay, so he described, I guess, part of the Navajo uh, culture is that you explore your masculine and feminine side. There's like a dual sexuality side. Okay. And so he's explored both. And she is also, she identifies as queer. And okay. so she also has explored both. So like, there's also that binding them. So I think they might work. I like them a lot. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I, I, I literally just had the photos and I was like, these two look like they come from different periods of time. Yes. I don't understand yes. what's happening. She's from the 2000s. He's from like the 80s. I get yeah, it. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't sure if there was like a yeah. time machine involved with these two. I wasn't sure what was happening here. If this is a Doctor Who situation, mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So cool. we'll see. I think they're going to, I think they're going to make it, but we'll okay. see. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But we're going to talk about people who aren't going to make it today. We're going to talk about some sink and chips, so let's get to it. Mm-hmm. All right, so we are talking 90 Day Last Resort, Season 1, Episode 11, That Last Text. Which is a dumb name. I don't, yeah, I don't know what it refers to. I Jovi's texting? I don't know. I don't know. It anyway. should. The title of this should be Episode 11, The Last Time We Want to See Ed on Our Screens Ever Again. Or Episode 11, the last therapy session for Kalani and Oswalu. Mm. So dun, dun, dun. we have a small scene with Ed and Liz playing chess in the beginning. Which we'd and seen in in all the, the opening credits, which I'd wondered when we were going to get to that. I have a couple questions. Number one, do they know how to play? No. Because Liz is trying to make it seem like she does. Maybe she knows at a low level. I don't feel like either of them are deeply invested in knowing about chess. Okay. My second question is why watch, does Ed think Once we they- find out that Liz is like a secret chess <laughs> like superstar a la um oh, Angela the could Queen's be on the Gambit. House of Villains. Oh, Angela could totally be on the House of Villains. Okay. Duh. Right. How'd we miss that? Um Ed thinks that they're the best the couple with the best chance of making out of here and I have why? Why? I don't why? know why he keeps saying this. I don't know. 
Also, there's this moment when they're on the couch where they shit talk my boy and Yara Mm -hmm. saying that they are a cardboard couple who only cares about looks. And they're not taking this therapy seriously. They're not Mm -hmm. getting anything out of it. I'm like, these two are taking, uh, from what we have seen, taking this a lot more seriously than you two are. Yara is at least. Yara certainly is. I don't know if Crawfish Fuckboy is. (laughs) He's running around Key West trying to hook up with a stripper. He is trying to spend time with his (laughs) former partner. And I don't know if you knew this, but he went to Jamaica with her once. (laughs) Did you know he went to Jamaica with her once for two weeks? Two weeks. Not Costa Rica. Jamaica. Two Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mm -hmm. bless. 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 So now we go to Kalani and she has assembled the team of therapists. We get a double therapist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't want Chicken Jenny there and I don't blame her. I don't blame her either. I love Chicken Jenny, but what is she going to add to this? Talk about past life regression? Yeah, we're not here to talk about past lives. Mm -hmm. We're here talking about the fact that I'm dumping my husband. Yeah. So um, she wants to tell Suelu she's going to break the news about Hall J Pass. Mm-hmm. And it's Dr. McCarty, And I feel like I objectify him by calling him that because now I don't even know his real name. Dr. Jason Prendergast. Thank you. I'm here to and help. Dr. Janie Lacey. Yes. Dr. And Janie we... Janney and Dr. Dr. Hadi McCodhot. Yes. So <laughs> we start with the Suelu telling the story of how he couldn't find Kalani yesterday morning. Mm-hmm. She then says that she saw him erasing texts and it triggered something in her. Mm -hmm. And she ended up chatting with um, Hall J. Pass for that very reason. She then says she left to go see him with the intention of talking, but they ended up doing more. More. Dun, dun, dun. Asuelu starts doing the little kid thing where he's putting his hands over his ears. Mm. He's bucking his body back and forth. He's stopping his I was afraid he was going to start hitting himself again. Me too. Ugh. So he's starting to spiral and Dr. Jenny is like, or Dr. Janie's like, calm down, breathe, calm mm-hmm. down, breathe. Like just really, you know, kind of. I'm so glad we had two therapists for this. Me too. Well, then yeah. I realized they probably have Dr. McCarty there in case he gets out of control. Yeah. Although I don't be. know if Dr. McCarty can, can handle Oswego's rage. They probably had security 10 feet away. That we oh, I'm see. sure. I'm sure. Kalani was so scared. Oh, God. I remember going to my therapy session where I was going to tell my husband I was done. Yeah. (sighs) Anybody who thinks this is fake, this is not fake. The Mm -mm. way that Kalani sobs later, I have been Mm -mm. there. I've been in that exact position. And Mm -hmm. it's real. It's It's really, really real. Kalani says things with the Suelu are very hard and complicated. And she has to fight to even get an ounce of kindness or affection or love. And she doesn't have to do that with Mr. Hall J. Pass. Yeah. Kalani says she knows the Suelu is trying, but he started trying way too late. Yeah. And that's it. I, I think she finally had had enough. Mm-hmm. And then having a taste of what someone else could be like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was enough for her to go, Mm-mm, I can't anymore. Yeah. So Suelu says, do you want to divorce me? And she nods. Yes, yeah, she came and say it. She just nods. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Kalani sobs and tells the camera that she's been fighting for seven years to make this work. Yeah. And she can't do it anymore. Yeah. Oh, and this poor girl. I know. I feel I feel so bad for her. I mean, like I said, this this is fucking real. Yeah. And Isuelu on the couch says, This hurts, but I can't change it, and this is not what I want. Mm-hmm. Fuck off, Isuelu. Knowing what we know now about him, fuck yeah. off. Fuck off, yeah, that's true. So Dr. Janie says, we need to move slowly and make decisions that are not made from emotion. And she tells the camera, it's hard to heal from repetitive cheating because it's almost like it's an addiction. Mm -hmm. And the partner then has betrayal trauma. And who just wrote an article on betrayal trauma? This girl. Uh, This girl. So talk to me. (laughs) Let's talk a little bit about betrayal trauma. So betrayal trauma is when you've been betrayed in the deepest of ways Mm -hmm. and you can't trust people because you're so blinded by. So there's this thing called betrayal blindness. I feel like I've talked to you about this. Maybe Mm -hmm. not. We talked about it when we talked about betrayal, that, that terrible. Oh yeah. Yeah. That terrible podcast Mm -hmm. that people loved, but we Mm -hmm. thought was dumb. Betrayal blindness is how some people it's a defense mechanism and it's a survival tactic if you will Mm -hmm. it's the way that some people are able to survive abusive relationships if their livelihood or life depends on the abuser 
Sure. So it's most often like in situations with children who are being abused. Their okay. life life depends on the parent. Sure. So they have to pretend the abuse isn't happening. Mm-hmm. And I sense. feel like maybe Kalani had a little bit of that. And now the, the once you once that's gone, like oh, and yeah. you see the betrayal, you can't unsee it. Mm-mm. Can't unsee it. And she so, said it out loud to too many people at this point. Yeah. I think she could keep h- hiding from it when it, the only person who knew was Kalini. Yeah. But now the whole world knows. Yeah. Yep. We haven't seen Kalini at all. Lately. We need to Mm-mm. see her. Maybe she's, I don't know where she, oh, she's with Maybe she's kids. with Hall J. Pass. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So Kalani says, how do you go back to someone who treats you like shit is essentially what she says. Mm-hmm. And Asuela says he regrets treating her poorly and promises to treat her the best that he can. Kalani says, look, we have a great friendship here. The way that you treat me and help me with the boys. Really, Kalani? Really, Kalani? Really? He plays She's with them sometimes. giving him at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the way we laugh together, she said, but it's just a friendship. And Dr. Janie says, so what we're going to work on going forward is co-parenting. Yep. And that's very smart. Like, let's mm-hmm. just shift. Let's stop trying to resuscitate the dead horse. And then, yeah. And then Kalani is sobbing. And she, mm-hmm. on the couch, says... It was so hard to tell him. I have so much love for him. We had a whole life together, mm-hmm. but he's made his choice. Yeah. He made his choices. That's what she said. Yeah. And he yeah. did. Yeah. And I know people are going to come for her with cheating and, you know, the baller move of bringing her boyfriend to therapy, which <laughs> I'm just going to continue <laughs> to call that a baller move. But she had been beaten down and beaten down and beaten down without us knowing about the things that came out last week. Right. Without us knowing about the the sexual assault. Yeah. She had just been beaten down and beaten down and and she's just tired. Yeah. I mean, should all J pass have have stayed on the mainland? (laughs) Yeah. Probably. Should he have not ventured into the Florida Keys? Probably. (laughs) Yes. But again, baller move. Baller (laughs) move. (laughs) Oof. Yikes. Um, all right, so now we're going to go to the pontoon of uh, trauma. I don't know what we're calling it. Pontoon of regrets. <laughs> uh, the boat trip from hell is what I'm mm-hmm. referring to it as. Mm-hmm. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Don't put a bunch of hungover assholes on a pontoon boat and give them more booze. Especially the level to which they were hungover. Oh, yeah. I'm su- and- actually surprised there was not more people puking. And I have to tell you something. So... My husband and I are sneaking away on a little vacation. Yes, I'm and so excited for you. As one of those options, I was looking at this place to go okay. to. Ah. The problem is it's like an hour and a half from Key West. Yeah. So that means that explains why Ed was like sleeping in the car mm-hmm. and they were all it's a long they drive. drove an hour and a half to town. Mm-hmm. Cuz they went into Key West. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, both that, of them did. Yeah. The Havana Cabana is also in Key West. Yeah, and one of our backdoor friends commented and said that Key West had, like, intense COVID protocols. Ah. And so the Havana Cabana was open because it was, like, outdoors and stuff. Well, this was also January of 2023. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it really? Yeah, yeah. It was just the beginning of this year, so. Well, so there we go. It's an hour and a half away. COVID protocols, maybe still in place. I don't know. Maybe she said that COVID devastated Key West. I can't remember what she said. Something about COVID and Key West. Yeah, yeah. Okay, something cool. about it, guys. I mean, once I once I read the comment again, I'll let you know. But yeah, <laughs> no, I don't remember. Okay, so, let's go to the boat. We're on the boat trip from hell, and it's only a small group. So first of all, they ask where Kalani and Asuelu are, and we know where they are. They're ending their marriage. Mm-hmm. That's where they are. Mm-hmm. And Angela's there with, with Michael, Michael on the iPad. Michael. Why did they have to bring him on the boat? I love this how Jovi's therapy. like, I love how Jovi's like, all right, all right, all right, Michael. Don't get seasick <laughs> on the boat. Don't get seasick on this like, boat. Like, pretend like he's actually there. <laughs> well, just, later, Angela goes, don't trip, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> the times that you just look over and she's sitting there holding, and Ed sometimes was holding Michael. I'm like, mm-hmm. why are why is Michael here? I don't understand. The best so, is later or tomorrow in the tomorrow. Listen to me in the previous for next week. Mm-hmm. Michael's all dressed up for the ceremony. <laughs> anyway, God bless. God bless. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that would have made the boat 
fight better is if Jovi had beaten Ed with Michael. This yes. would have been the prime yes. opportunity yes. Yes. for someone to beat somebody with Michael. And I just had an idea, speaking of loved ones on phones, who do we have to, what do we have to sacrifice on the altar of Matt Sharp to get Nickel and Azin on the show? <laughs> to get oh Nickel and Azin on the phone and the iPad. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, we did have many seasons of 90 Day where it was Nickel and her phone. I so know. I, I would love know. it. I would love it. I would love it. I thought of someone else that would be good for the villains. And that would either be, I think that would be Maria. I'm not accountant, Maria. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. she might be good. Mm-hmm. Who was, and was Caesar, Caesar her guy? Yeah. Okay. Caesar, the world's dumbest human. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dumb, 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 dumb. Yeah. I could see Nickel banging around the key. The keys, asking for chicken tenders, <laughs> looking for French ketchup. Rats. You know, I, I got it. I got it. Do you think she's still traipsing May around the planet? May is probably, what, 10 now? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. this was like six or seven years ago. Oh, poor May. Poor May. Mm. I hope Rob Lee has has control of that kid because, anyway. Me too. Back to the boat trip from hell. Okay. So it's real cold between Yara and Jovi. I almost said Jara and Yovi. Yovi and Jara. Jesus. Yara and Jovi. Yeah. yeah, Can't do it. Yeah. And um, Jovi did take a screenshot of the call log for Angela and showed it to him. Michael did. No, Jovi did. Jovi did. Okay. Jovi did. Remember, Michael refused. Jovi did. So she feels. She well, Michael better. claimed Michael claimed he wiped them all. Which what is he doing? All right, what is he doing over there wiping calls in Nigeria? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nigeria, baby. And she talks about how she's still struggling struggling to trust him. Yeah, can't speak this morning. Struggling yeah. to trust him. I said Michael's here on the iPad. Thank God. <laughs> Ed Ed jokes about the boat taking them to a strip club. Too soon, dude. Oh, Too soon. one thing I one thing I have to mention. Just this is important in context. When they were playing the chess game earlier, yes. Ed did tell Liz that he was motorboated by a stripper and that he, he was touching some strippers. So that yeah. news has come out between them. Right. Because that's okay. what we thought, Jovi. Mm-hmm. That's where we thought this fight came from, but it is not. It, it kind of did, but go on. Kind of, but mm-hmm. oh God, it sucks. Um, Angela says she's mad at Ed and Jovi for calling Michael at the mm-hmm. strip club. And mm-hmm. Jovi sticks up for Michael, of course. Uh and then Yara says Jovi didn't have enough respect for her to give her a call and tell her he was going to the strip club. Nope. 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 Uh, Ed tries to say he behaved mostly. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I behave mostly, you mean you motorboated a stripper, you grabbed her ass and then had her <laughs> on your face? Sure. Sure. Well, okay. So the important part is Yara says, Jovi told me that you and Asuelu did not behave mm-hmm. and you were... And am I stepping on your notes here? I'm sorry if I am. And, You're good. And um, and Ed, you could see Ed's face just yeah. change, like oh fuck. So oh, I think that he, even though he already told Liz, I don't know if he was completely honest with her because he tells her about the motorboating, but he doesn't tell her about him grabbing ass and the lap dance and the lap dance. Yeah. So Yara's like, Joey told me he's the only one who knows how to behave, and and she goes <laughs> off about it. And Ed is just frozen in fear. And so then go on. So then the yeah. rest happens. So Liz asks why Jovi asked her, asked them to Ed to lie to them, mm-hmm. lie for them. And, um, you know, he just, <sighs> Jovi is so interesting here because he's a little kid who got caught. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's a little kid who got caught like stealing cookies. Yeah. And he's trying so hard to, like, not get in trouble with mommy. Well, Jovi's interesting because in all of his confessionals, the entire time they're on this island, he always says things like, um, you know, I'd rather, you know, when I get in trouble for this later. Like, he's all, mm-hmm. he knows he's going to get in trouble. He knows he's doing he the wrong thing. But he's ready to accept that consequence. He can't help himself. Mm-mm. Nope, he's he, a he does the cost boy. benefit and ana- crawfish <laughs> fuck boy. He does the cost benefit analysis of this mm-hmm. every time and goes worth the price. Yep, yep. And Yara will forgive me because mm-hmm. she always does. I still think they're okay mm-hmm. in the long term. By the way, did you see that video that Jovi and Yara did pretending to be Jasmine and Gino? Genius, genius. Oh my Give God. them an Emmy. Folks, 
folks, if you <laughs> they've done this before with other couples. Yes. But this is the best. Jovi with the hat, Yara screaming at him with mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. Russian or her Ukrainian Panamanian accent. Oh yep. God. It was amazing. Give those two a goddamn Emmy, is what it I think. So funny. <laughs> See, this is why I know they're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because they can do shit like this and they're fine. But yeah. they do have they do have to figure out why Jovi keeps pushing yeah. on this bruise. Yeah. Jovi needs to figure out why he keeps pushing on yes. this bruise. This is Jovi. This is a Jovi problem. Uh, Liz says in her talking head that she notices that Jovi does not talk nicely to Yara a lot. Right. Because Yara's yip yapping, mm-hmm. to put it in Jody's, Jovi's words. Yeah. She's yip yapping. And he goes, shut up, Yara. Yep. And everybody's like, oh. <gasps> <laughs> yeah it was not good guys it was no. not a good look for our uh crawfish, crawfish, boy, crawfish. No, 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 maybe no, this no. is actually proving some of the fuck boy crawfish crawfish fuck boy but yeah it, he tells her to shut up and shutting up ugh, you can't not tell good. your partner to shut up in a serious way yeah 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 no, you could be like shut not. up right exactly or you don't feel like shut up, up. <laughs> right there's a big difference between oh my god would you shut up to shut up yeah, it's not yeah. different. And that's what he did. So mm-hmm. Jovi says Yara is more conservative about sex and just doesn't understand the strippers, mm-hmm. which we've talked about a lot in this in this mm-hmm. season that that is a cultural difference between the two of them. By the way, can we talk about just again how fucking beautiful Yara is on this Yara's cruise? stunning. She looks great. She that looks blue and white bathing yeah, suit. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. And the fact that we'll we'll get to it, but the fact that she questions that is. I know. I know. I know. So awful. Yara says that if he talks to her that way, he can go marry a stripper. <laughs> okay. okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. Now we get to Ed pushing the button of texting the stripper. He is a troll, this guy. He is a horrible person. He is a troll. Like, Yara's gonna see this show. She'll She's find it out, dude. Yeah. Yeah. He can't he can't help himself from stirring the pot. No. And what I think some of it is, is he sees that Yara and Jovi are the stronger couple. Yeah. So he needs to knock them down a peg so Mm -hmm. he and Liz can be elevated. You two will never be Jovi and Yara. No. Mm -mm. You are not Barbie and Ken. No. Sorry. No. Mm -mm. You are a thumb and an abused woman. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. God, he just gets worse and worse every day. And... Yara is hurt and Ed just keeps going. He texted a stripper. He he kept texting her. He wanted her to come hang out with us. And mm-hmm. and Jovi keeps saying like, I just want to have a good time. We just want to have a good time. Yeah. Jovi's one of these guys. And this is a problem too, where like, um, you know, I just want to be one of the boys and the boys should be allowed to do whatever they want. You know what right. I mean? Like he's totally the type of guy who's going to want to have a man cave and yep. do whatever the fuck he wants down there. Even if it's four o'clock in the morning, you know, hanging out, doing whatever, while Yara's upstairs taking care of their kid. Right. He's a boys will be boys kind of guy. Yeah. And that's and the that's the crawfish behavior we need to get out of him. Yes. I truly, that is that is the crawfish fuck boy. But I truly think that's fixable. I do too. You know what I mean? Like I think that can be exercised. <laughs> uh it's crawfish fuck boy exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> crawfish fuck boy exorcism last night we went to a burlesque show um done by the woman whose classes i'm taking and it was you know halloween themed mm-hmm. and her favorite movie is the exorcist oh. that's the movie she puts on to relax wow okay that's like <laughs> my mom throwing on like the most heinous murder show like forensic files to relax well sure we all have our mm-hmm. thing uh yeah i think a lot is starting to come out about people who use like murder shows to relax <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I like a good murder show. I love yeah, a good same. forensic files, but they keep me up at night. You know, I, I yeah. really, they stay with me. They stay with me too. When I want to chill, I'm doing a Shit's Creek, The Office, Parks and Rec. West Wing for me is yeah. a good one. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Angela says she's super disappointed in Jovi. Yeah. For, for doing all this. And I think Angela sees that like, again, this is why I start to think Angela's redeemable. Me too. <laughs> Wait, let's go into our cone of silence where no one can hear us. <laughs> I think Angela is redeemable. And I if we think, don't say it really loudly, no one will know. I think Angela is not bad on this season. 
She's not horrible. She's learning some things. She's not abusing anybody. The problem is I we see okay, like on a silence over. <clears throat> the problem is we see months from now she beats the shit out of her friend in a New York correct hotel lobby. <laughs> we don't know what that friend did. That friend could have deserved it. No, I'm just right. kidding, guys. Just, no one deserves physical <laughs> violence. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, okay. Maybe that pretend, woman like, swung yeah. first. We don't maybe, know. Maybe maybe it was self defense. Maybe she had video sex with Michael on the iPad. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Maybe. Maybe. Again, maybe she again. looked at Michael. <laughs> again, Michael is never getting to the U.S. No. Can we just stop with this? He's he's safe where he is. Let's he's safe where he is. is. He's better off where he is. Hey, everyone. Stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. Oh, anyway, we're going back and forth about the texting and Jovi's like, it's not a big deal, blah, blah, blah. Yara's pissed and Yara throws her drink on him. Okay. And I saw something in Jovi in that moment because oh, Jovi yeah. is very much, and I said this last week, he hates drama and he will do anything to avoid it. Yep. And he sees emotional reactions as quote unquote drama. Yep. Like sure. he is not going to say, Yara, oh my God, you're upset. He's just going to be like, you're being dramatic. You're being dramatic. Jovi does not like public displays of this stuff. This is his culture, how he was raised. Yep. So I think that when she throws the drink at him, something snaps. You could just see this flash of mm -hmm. rage mm -hmm. in his face. Mm -hmm. he Thankfully, he doesn't do anything with it. No, no. But, but you can see it. Like, you how can, fucking dare yes. you? He's furious. And he is 100% going to say something to her when they get back to the room at this point. Of course, of course. Even if this is where the whole thing ended, they're going to have words later. Oh, yeah. Oh, Spoiler yeah. alert. This is not where the whole thing ended. Yeah. Right. We have more to go. Mm -hmm. So Angela comforts Yara again. This is why Angela might be redeemable. <laughs> um, <laughs> Angela can never be redeemed. She's a horrible human. I'm just going to, I don't know what I'm saying here. I'm having a, a moment. But she is very sweet with Yara. She is. She really is. And comforts her. Yeah. Michael is very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's like, wait, can you repeat that? Hey, what's happening here? Can you me over that way? The audio got all messed up with the waves. Can someone help, please? Like, what is... I just... My, notice, literally, Michael is confused. Because yeah. Michael's confused. You, yeah. I yeah. feel like Michael's confused all the time, but add in an iPad across an ocean and it's not getting any Michael's better. Michael's going, what? What did they say? What's going on? What's going on, my darling? What's going on? Oh, my gosh. He doesn't know. I love him. Yeah. I love him. Uh, I'm still sad about his mom. Anyway, I know I loved his mother. I loved his mother. One too. of the one of the unsung heroes of 90 Day Fiance. Yes, and, and one Michael's of the most mother. beautiful members of 90 Day Fiance. Yep. God, yep. that woman was gorgeous. Jovi asks Ed why he's ratting him out. Yeah, he's like, "You're going against bro code. <laughs> this is bro code, dude." <laughs> Ed says he felt guilty, but for sure now he feels really guilty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, what is Ed, Ed's a snail. Throw salt at him and tell him to go away. And Ed says he thinks Jovi had it coming. No, he what didn't. a dick bag. Like, Jovi this was is nice. Not your relationship, Ed. Jovi was nice. He included you. He, he didn't treated want to. you like one of the boys. And this is what you fucking do. Do you think if you Kelly were still code, man. He totally went against Broco. Do you think if Kelly were still here, they would have taken Ed to the strip club? Um. I don't think yes. Jovi wants a night alone with Aswalu. Yeah, I think Kelly Kelly would have shit would have gone down differently if Kelly would have gone down differently. And here's the thing, like I what Jovi did was wrong. I'm not yes. saying it wasn't. I went off last episode about it. Mm -hmm. He was clearly texting that girl to hang out. It was beyond where do you work? Right. You know, and it was it's a problem, but that is a problem that Yara and Jovi have to solve between them. Yeah. You don't get involved, Ed. Ed. No, no. But he needs to because he needs to make everyone else look worse mm -hmm. than he and Liz are. And, you know, if you really think Yara needs that information while they're in the company of therapists to work through it, then you have Liz tell her. Mm -hmm. You don't throw it at them like a grenade on a boat when everyone's hungover. Right. And you're all trapped there. Yeah. Ridiculous. Oh, I hate him. I yeah. hate him. I hate it. Ed. Ed is not redeemable at all. No. Okay. So Ed thinks Jovi had it coming. Yara wants to see the texts. Yeah. Uh, 
she'll see it when this airs. It's not good. When this airs, and and Jovi just doesn't want to talk to her. He, I mean, everyone's walking off. Yeah, everyone's walking off. And this boat isn't big enough for all of this Mm -mm. drama. No, they can't get far enough away from each other. Ed asks Jovi how he's going to explain to his daughter where he was. What a dick bag! What the fuck, dude? No, 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 no. Listen to me, Ed. A two or three year old kid. This is off limits. Off this, limits. Off their limits. Cho- their children have nothing to do with this. Nothing to do with at it. At all. Nothing to do with it. This is a baby. It's a baby. This is child. Well, this child's a toddler, but she's a baby. But she's this not is- going to want to know why daddy's at a strip club. I mean, did he possibly mean, like, how will you explain this to your daughter someday? Did he mean that? Maybe. maybe? But, but, like, that's not a problem. And that's number a, that's one, a someday problem. But number one, this is not the place. Number no. two, it's not his place. No. If Yara wants to say that to him, like, my How are you going to explain gonna this to our daughter? Grow up and see this on TV. How are you yep. going to explain this? That's one thing. But this is, Ed is a fucking troll. He's a troll. He is. He, is, he wants nothing more to do than to start a fight, make them look bad, and take any hot seat off of him. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And I said Angela sitting there with Michael on the iPad was ridiculous. Like, this fight is happening, and there's Angela yeah. with Michael on the iPad. Yara, Yara loses it. Yara's Yara like, has mm-hmm. Jovi's back here. She does. This is mm-hmm. why it's okay. Yeah. We see even in the midst of this. Mama Bear come out here. Yeah. She's like, you don't fucking talk about my daughter. Mm-mm. You get her name out of your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh Yara. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. I-, I don't. I do not want to come between Yara and her child. Nope. 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 She would sell. Well, I think she would sell Jovi up a river for her daughter. Yes. Yeah. She's, she's a a fierce mama and I love it. Yeah. I love it too. Mm -hmm. Except you are concerned about the fact that she's doing her makeup and Mila's like climbing the (laughs) rafts. Well, (laughs) there is a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah, But I do think that if somebody was to harm her child or come near her child, she would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She'd be so. paying attention. I think she'd put down the phone then. She would put down the phone and yes. her makeup brush yes. for that. Yes. So this this is just getting ugly. Liz is trying to mm-hmm. step in and trying to calm Ed down and get in the middle of this. And then well, it gets pissed And this at is her. important. Liz is kind of on Ed's side at first. Uh-huh. But then she's like, Ed, too far, man. Too far, yeah, dude. As soon as she as soon as he brought up Myla. Yeah. That's where Liz was like, no fucking no, way. We're like, done. Mm-mm. It's fine if you want to be a, a dick bag about what happened last night. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Mm-hmm. We're all adults in this. Well, we all pretend to be adults in this boat. Mm-hmm. Myla, mm-mm. Mm-mm. no, no way, no how. And Liz is a mother. I mean, I don't believe she has custody of her child, but she is a mother. Yeah, she is. Anyhow, Ed tries to apologize to Liz. And did you, like, he was on top of her. This was weird. It was really weird. He was forcing Eskimo kisses on her? Yes. And, and I, I love like, an Eskimo kiss, why are but you this doing is not this? the time. No, yeah. it was weird. It was he weird. He was upset. And he's, if folks don't know what Eskimo kisses are, I mean, is that a thing everyone knows? Rubbing the nose back yeah, and forth. Yeah, or you just do your noses against each other. My dad used to do that with me all the time when I was a little kid. Yeah, it Eskimo occurred kiss. to me that some people may not be watching this and just listening. True. So, guys, you have to understand the body language. Liz is sitting down with her back and against has, the back of the boat. And yeah, Ed has and Ed, his, yeah. his hands over her, like over her shoulders. On the railing. And is leaned in and is aggressively Eskimo kissing her as she's yelling stop. Right. In her face. Um, it was weird. Yeah. The other thing my dad used to do were butterfly kisses. Is that cheek? It's when you take your eyelash and like blink your eyelash on someone's cheek. Okay. All right. So yeah. it just feels like a little something on your cheek. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I used to do it to me too when I was a baby. Anywho. Uh, yeah. It, he is so in her face and she's like, you don't know when to shut up. I don't want your Eskimo kisses. Get out of my face. And he mm-hmm. wouldn't stop. And then we're coming to the end of this boat ride. <laughs> the boat people are trying to tell everyone to sit down. Everyone's a shit show. I feel bad for these boat operators. Like Ooh, me too. Are, and it's dark out saying? now. And it's dark out now. And they have barely docked and Jovi jumps off the boat. Yeah, Jovi's done. He's not listening to these people. He's done. No, no. He doesn't want to be anywhere near this hot mess express anymore. He's pissed, but he's not that pissed because he heads back to the room 
slams the door, slams the curtain, but doesn't lock the door. No. I think he's embarrassed. He what? is embarrassed. He does not like this shit. Mm-mm. But ironically, he doesn't see what he's doing as ridiculous in public. Right. You know what I mean? Like going yeah. to the strip club, acting this way around strippers, being pissed drunk all the time. Like he doesn't think that's embarrassing for Yara, but it is. But it is. She's embarrassed by his but behavior. But he's a guy, so he can do it. Right. He's mm-hmm. a f- crawfish fuckboy. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I think like... I think that if he were not doing this on a regular basis, Yara would not care if every once in a while yeah. he went to a strip club and let off steam with a bunch of guys. It's sure. the fact that I'm sure he's doing this multiple times a week mm-hmm. for that month that he's home. Mm-hmm. And in his mind, he's like, I'm home for a month. I'm not working. I'm going to have fun. And then I go back to work where I'm stuck on a oil rig for a month and I can't do anything. Well, and the fact that he told us last week that – the first like act of him going to a strip club is so tied and connected to rebellion, like yep. teenage rebellion. I just think there's something there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this is his way of rebelling against Yara, against Mrs. Gwen at the at the time that he was doing it. Yeah, because he was there's, 16 and he snuck into strip clubs on Bourbon Street. There's some kind of reward he's getting from mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like, I'm still myself. I'm still who I am. Nobody can tell me what to do. This is what... Right. I don't I'm know. I'm married. I have but, a kid, but I can still yeah. fuck off to the strip club he and you can't stop He needs therapy me. for this. Like, he does. He needs to assemble the Avengers like Kalani did this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and and get them all down there and be like, I have a problem. I yeah. cannot stop going to strip clubs and you need to help right. me. And it's interesting because I saw in the Pink Shade Facebook group, not the mm-hmm. Pink Shade Bunkies, but just the regular Pink Shade group. Somebody, you know, was talking about how terrible Jovi was for going to strip clubs. And it was an interesting dialogue of people. And I mm-hmm. my comment was, the only reason it's a problem is because it bothers his wife. Yes. Yeah. That's the only yes. reason it's a problem. Right. Yara is bothered by this, period. That's it. Mm -hmm. And somebody was like, going to a strip club is absolutely cheating. No, it's not. I I commented, I'm like, I I would love to understand this rationale because I don't understand it at all. Yeah. How going to a strip club is cheating. Look, whatever rules you have set up for your relationship is is on your, it's your business. Absolutely. My only hope is that people who do feel that way are clear with their partner that they feel that way. Right. I agree. Like, I don't feel that way. But if somebody else does. Sure. Sure. But don't assume your husband is going to know or your partner is going to know that you consider that cheating unless you say that explicitly. Yeah, I agree with that. Fucking somebody else without your consent is cheating. Mm -hmm. That's a real clear one. Yeah. This is where I feel like we're getting into the gray area of people's relationship nuance. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for me, it's not a big deal. But people also think porn is cheating and i don't think that's cheating either i don't either i don't yeah. either Mm-mm. what do you want no. man i don't but i Whatever. but you know again to each his own and this yeah. is something that bothers yara we don't know why but i'm sure like you said it's the frequency that bothers yara yeah. or it's the he can't go without it yeah it's that the bothers yara and the like the, the fact that he can't give it up yeah that's what really bugs yeah bugs her so now Jovi's in the room and Yara comes back. <sighs> Did oh. he catch the Michael don't trip when they're getting off the boat? Yes, Michael. <laughs> don't trip, Michael. Don't trip, Michael. With your iPad. Oh my God, it'd be so funny if like Michael were actually walking around the room pretending to be oh, like God. carrying oh, his camera God. with him. Oh, God. Wouldn't it be great if they'd gotten Michael on a pontoon boat ride <laughs> at the same time? <laughs> Right, that he could have had the same experience. Is, who are his friends? What do we call his friends? Oh, oh, the goofballs. The goofballs. The goofballs. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love the goofballs. Yep, yep, goofballs yep. Great. So, Yara comes back in, um, and Jovi says he knows what he did was wrong, and he just wants to move on. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to talk mm-hmm. about it anymore. Mm-hmm. He felt attacked, and he. Oh, this is before Yara comes in. This is his voiceover. His yeah. Yeah. talking head. He felt attacked and he isn't sure how to handle it with Yara when she comes back. And yeah. he was he, being attacked. He felt he felt attacked by Yara when she threw the drink and he felt emasculated. Yes. And that's an area where Jovi is not comfortable. No, this is mm-hmm. – crawfish fuckboy cannot, cannot be emasculated. No, no. Part no. of the ethos of the crawfish fuckboy <laughs> is the masculinity. Yes. This is not good. Yes. So, it has to be toxic. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yara comes in and, I mean, the mood is dark. The mood is grim. Mm-hmm. Jovi is drinking a big old glass of wine. Yeah. Jovi's just laying in bed. <laughs> Wait, drinking a glass of wine out of a plastic cup. <laughs> Jovi is lying in bed, angrily drinking. <laughs> That's what <Yes>. I <laughs> Much like you angrily wrote poems, yes. Jovi is yes. angrily drinking. Yep. Oh, I've angrily drank as well. <laughs> oh. Who amongst us? Who amongst us is not? Yep. Yara says she doesn't care what Edna Suelu do. She wants to know why Jovi texted her. Why was he texting her? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he kept saying, I just texted her to try to have a good time. They hooked up a while ago. This was this is not anything he's interested in. I believe him. I don't think he was going to do anything nefarious with this woman. I mean, there's cameras following him. Of course, right. he's not going to. But he's I don't think he would have. I don't think he would have off camera either. No. There's a I don't weird think thing about Jovi. Her. Yeah, there's a weird thing about Jovi. I feel like. You know, he's kind of like a border collie. Like you have to give him <laughs> the yard to run. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he'll always come back. Like yeah, you have to give him that, that energy out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And maybe his energy of not cheating is going to a strip club. Right. And that's a very, it takes a very confident woman or partner to put up with that. To yeah. put up with that. And Yara's we, not. We see that Yara. Oh, I, I, God. I know. Can you imagine looking like her and thinking you aren't pretty? Good <laughs> God. I mean, you know, I'm basically a meatball on two date picks at this point <laughs> over here with a wig. <laughs> I don't know. I don't This is all foreign to me. This all is foreign. all foreign. What, you're not a tall, blonde Ukrainian? No, not, no, no, not okay. at all. Not at all. all. <laughs> the opposite of all those words. <laughs> I'm tall. That's about all I got. The only thing Yara and I have in, tr- in common is being tall. Yeah. That's about yeah. it. And I don't even actually know how y- tall Yara is. I sh- we should ask. Matt and Jake, how tall they are. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because I'd be mm-hmm. curious. Or just go into the Google. I don't feel like Jovi's very tall. I don't feel like he's very tall either. Uh, in fact, I want to say, I think they said that they, they described him as a short king. Anyway. Yeah, I, I get that. I believe that. That that yeah. explains a little bit of this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And y- Yara really believes if this woman had shown up, he would bang her. And I yeah. don't think he would have. Well, and Yara keeps saying, this is the one that you took to Costa Jamaica. Rica. He's like, Jamaica, Jamaica, Jamaica. two weeks. Jovi, jo- Jovi, Jovi, this is not the time. Not the time. It doesn't Jovi. matter where you took mm-hmm. her. You went on a two-week bang trip with a stripper. Listen to me. I'm like, not the time, Jove. Like, we're buddies. Jove. <laughs> Jove. <laughs> you know oh why I God. think I like him so much? Because he every time I say Jovi, I think of my man, Bon Jovi. Ah, Jovi. Mm-hmm. I I read someone say that Mrs. Gwen said that he was named after Bon Jovi. Oh, well, then I like him even better. (laughs) Did I ever tell you that my um, ex-father-in-law and presumably mother-in-law are buried like feet away from the John Bon Jovi family crypt in New Brunswick? God, I love that man. Love him. Love him. He could do no wrong. And he's got that whole kitchen to feed homeless people. I know, like, I know. He's so good. Soul he's, food kitchen, yep. Great. We should go there. Yeah. Well, Timmy and I were right near it and didn't go. We should go. Road trip. So we get back and, and Yara just can't understand why he's doing this. And Mm-mm. she has this talking head outside. Ugh. And my heart fucking broke for her. I know. She's just like, she just thinks this is about her. And she's like, I know I had a baby. My body changed. It's not girl but then she says something that jovi said if i wasn't hot he would leave me my uh my apologizing for jovi ends now okay okay um, and Do it we will need never the shame happen bell? again it will never happen again <laughs> i am going hold on i'm going to shame corner shame. yeah i'm shame. done i'm done if he, if that Shame. motherfucker said this, which we have no reason to think that Yara would lie about this, no, I'm done. I'm over yeah. his crawfish fuck boy. Forget it. <laughs> we had a whole long love affair, and now Mm-mm. it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Who no would more. say? Come on, dude. Come no. on. No. Now, could he have said something and she misinterpreted it to be that? I don't know. It's but possible. If he, if he said that in any way to her, we're done. Named after Bon Jovi or not, we're done. 
The thing about Yara is you're in the smirch, the Bon Jovi name. That's right. How dare you? First of all, first of all, first how of dare all. you? First how of all. You? <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, like, Yara's English is excellent, but it's also not perfect. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there are times when we've seen her misconstrue what people are saying. Yeah. Which her English is not perfect. So maybe that's what happened. Yeah. But I but I can also see him saying that, unfortunately. I, I could know. see him saying it too. And to be honest, I could see her feeling that way about him. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. But she's I'm, just I'm out there crying and she's like, I do all this. I go to the gym every day. I got my body fixed, meaning she got her boobs. Mm-hmm. Like I mm-hmm. do everything to stay attractive to him, and he still needs to go see the strippers, the strippers. Yara, get the get the two more therapy. Then she both says, of you need more therapy. Then she says, uh, "Strippers don't complain, and maybe I complain and too I much. Complain too much. Mm-hmm. Gee, wonder where she heard that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know what? In a way, she's not wrong. Not that she complains too much. Maybe she does. I don't know. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not in their life. Yeah. But part of the allure of a stripper and sex workers in general, and this is no shade at all. I, I'm a hundred percent supportive of sex workers as long as everybody involved Are is strippers completely sex consenting. workers though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're considered sex workers. Okay. Um, I have friends who are strippers who call themselves strip sex okay. workers. So, all right. Um, uh, the thing is you don't have to deal with the laundry and the complaining and the, paying the bills right. and the dealing with in-laws right. and the dealing with right. the baby and the dealing mm-hmm. with life. You get to go and live in this fantasy land for 10 minutes, 10 hours, whatever it is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with people to whom you owe nothing and owe nothing to you. Yes. It's purely transactional. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's not sustainable. No, no. The whole the whole premise of 90 day fiance is transactional relationships. Let's like <laughs> right. be real here. Some are less and more transactional than others, but yes, they're transactional. Mm-hmm. And in, in a way she's right. Again, I don't know if she complains too much, but he has to be real and present with her and he doesn't have to be that way at a strip club. Right. Right. And it's easy and it's fun. And he goes there and he gets to be that guy and then he leaves and he gets to yeah. be the guy, you know. And he was in his glory when he was able to be like the big man showing Asuelu the way around the strip club. Oh, he was in his glory. And he didn't touch anybody. Mm -mm. And he knew when to get Asuelu out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He actually, he was really well behaved that night. Minus texting the Jamaica, Costa Rica stripper. (laughs) Minus that, he was really well behaved. Sure, he was fine. Mm -hmm. I think he's also hyper aware there's cameras on him. So too. Yeah. He's not. But I have. but I agree with you. Even if the cameras were gone, I think he would have been okay. Would he have blurred a little bit more lines? Maybe. Maybe. But, but I think not he, many he, more. No. I I don't think he would cheat on her. I really don't. No. I really don't. I think the most he would do is stick a dollar in a G string. And I don't think that because I think Jovi's such a good guy. I just think Jovi deep down knows he is punching above his weight with Yara mm-hmm. and he's not gonna fuck that up. No. Mm-mm. And the fact that she thinks she's punching above her weight is heartbreaking jesus christ i want to get her i hope she and chicken jenny when mm. they did their past life regression mm-hmm. i hope we talked a lot about her insecurity yeah and yeah. how to work on that because we got to hear that did you hear that interview i did hear the interview oh, and they okay. didn't talk about that they talked just there. about her okay. past life regression um milo was Mila has been her guardian angel in many lives mm-hmm. so mm. sweet uh, yeah, it, I just, I just wanted to give Yara, I wanted to go into my television and my computer screen and give Yara a hug. I know. I love her. I love her too. Um, we have this small scene with the Swaylu back in the room and he's telling the camera like, this is a lot. Yeah. And I'm staying here because I want to co-parent with her and hopefully things will change. I have a real problem with this asshole. I really do. I don't believe <laughs> anything he says. I oh, think yeah. he just, he wants to try to force himself, force her to change her mind. He doesn't give a fuck about co-parenting. He didn't give a fuck about co-parenting when he was with her. Right. Mr. I just walk into the house. Mm -hmm. Hashtag never forget. So they meet up and they hug outside and Kalani says, I think we should divorce right away. (laughs) She says, I don't want to wait. 
and they're both crying. And Kalani tells the camera, the sooner the better for the kids. I just hope he can deal with this and move forward with all of us. She Uh knows he's not going to be able to. No. Mm -mm. If I were Kalani, I'd be sitting there going, he's, he's going to go back to Samoa. Mm -hmm. Small. Mm -hmm. And I would let him, I would let him, let him too. Bye. So visit them, visit him once a year or have whatever. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even, I don't know, whatever. I don't know. I mean, he is their father, useless as he is. He is, but that doesn't mean he's going to be a dad. No, it so. doesn't. It doesn't. So now we get to Liz and Ed. Motherfucker. Alien versus Predator. <laughs> <laughs> who's the alien? Who's the Predator? Uh, it's definitely the Predator. Predator. Yeah. So Liz tells the camera that she is drained. She's like, I did have Ed's back. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he didn't appreciate it. So and I still got in trouble. Yep. I did what he wanted me to do and I still got in trouble. She said he treated someone else like crap. Oh, she tells him, you treated someone else like crap and it affected me. And then I just wrote a note to myself. Now we know why. Remember I was saying to you, what is with all this having my back bullshit constantly? Mm-hmm. It's because he likes to stir the shit yep. and he needs somebody to side with him. To clean up and, and to clean up mm-hmm. after him. Yep. Yep. And he just pokes people and stirs the shit all the time. Yep. And he expects her to not hold him accountable and just go with it. Yep. Absolutely. It's Ugh. awful. So he, Ed starts with an apology. And he says that Jovi kept coming at him. And Liz is like, you could have prevented the fight. You went too far. Yep. He, and he chose Ed, this. Then it, it devolves, guy. I'm not going to like read every single word. But eventually Ed says... The fight was between Jovi and me, and you standing in front of me made me look weak. And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? Right. You, you keep me yelling at me. Back, and when I do, you're telling me I'm making you look weak. Like, holy mind fuck, dude. Right. He is such an asshole. Oh. And he's like, you should not have injected yourself. And she's like, I'm done. And she walks away, and he's going, there you go. Therapy's working, babe. There you go. What a fucking troll this asshole I hate is. I wish we didn't know that they got married. Because that know. ruins, I mean, I that know. spoils us. I know. I want to go and find her. Shake her. And be like, girl, you don't have to do this. And just like, I feel like it's almost the scene. And I never, I will never forget the scene in all my life in Goodwill Hunting when um, Robin Williams is telling Matt Damon, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault. And yeah. finally Matt Damon breaks down. That's what I want to do with Liz. All time. One of the, the greatest, greatest movies. One of the most time. beautiful movies mm-hmm. of all time. Mm-hmm. And Ben Affleck and Matt Damon wrote that movie. I know. When I they love were like Ben Affleck, you're going to learn this about me. I, oh. ha- I He is my boy. I love okay. him so much. Yes. I believe the only, Goodwill Hunting notwithstanding, the only person who can direct Matt Damon, or excuse me, Ben Affleck to not suck is Kevin Smith. Oh, okay. Like Chasing Amy. Yeah. Yeah. All that. Yeah. Oh, Chasing okay. Amy is such a great movie. Such a good the movie. The problem with Ben Affleck, he does this, he does a very similar thing to say Kevin Costner in that they just keep pet playing themselves. And sometimes it works for the movie. Are you talking about John Dutton? <laughs> is that who John Dutton is? Kevin, Kevin Costner? Costner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I never knew because I haven't watched Yellowstone. John mm-hmm. Dutton. Protect the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> But he's always the same guy. Sometimes uh-huh. it works and sometimes it doesn't. It worked in Field of Dreams. It did not work in Waterworld. Are you surprised that I love Ben Affleck? He's toxic as fuck. Yeah, it's yeah. true. You do like the yeah. toxic boys. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, this this tracks. I love him. I love him. Mm. He is pretty. God, he is pretty. I, I hate love that, that he's with meme. I love that meme of him when he's outside smoking. With the smoking. <laughs> it's so good to use for everything. <laughs> I just hate that he's back with J Lo. I liked yeah. him with Jennifer Garner much better. Me too. Me too. But he's she's too good for him. Jennifer Garner's too good for him. <laughs> he's a fuck boy. He's a fuck boy. He is yes. Yes. he is a lobster fuck boy because he's he from Massachusetts. A he's a lobster fuck boy. <laughs> we can Which have all of the crustaceans. Are you? <laughs> Which crustacean fuck boy are you? He's a lobster fuck boy because he's from New England. Ooh. Yeah. I just I hate Ed so much and I hate the way he treats her Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I hate that she keeps going back to it and I want to snap her out of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and people who say she's a troll and she's terrible. Yes. She has terrible moments, Mm -hmm. but I have inordinate amounts of empathy for her because she is in such a classic abuse cycle. I do too. I feel like, is she the greatest person? Probably not, but even the greatest person doesn't deserve to be abused. Mm Mm-mm. 
So no, and when she's not with him, she's fun and lovely. Yes, yes. And she's. I too also pretty have for him for her. I also do. Yeah, she's too pretty for him too. So next time on, <clears throat> excuse me. Next time on, couples session for the end of the retreat. Right. Liz shows up to the girls' pre ceremony in the hotel room, and she's not dressed. And she's like, well, no, no, no. but we see. Later I'm here to tell you something. Dress, so. Yeah. Again, I wish we didn't know that they got married so we would actually be like, what's going to happen? We see the recommitment ceremony. Ed is right. worried they're done. Jovi is worried they're done. Michael's probably worried they're done. And I just wrote, these idiots. They're all idiots, these guys. They're all idiots. We see Angela whip out divorce papers and we do <laughs> see the girls coming to the ceremony and everyone's in a white gown except for Kalani. Right, because Kalani ain't doing it. She's not doing it. Mm-mm. I went, did, did we see a Swalu at the yeah. recommitment ceremony? Yeah, he's, okay. he's there like a big dum-dum going, okay. I hope she comes out and changes her mind and marries me. Okay. No, Idiot. this is not happening. Stop trying to make your marriage happen, uh, Swalu. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see next week. I want to see this therapy session. I want to see what comes up in that. I, I wish we had had more therapy sessions. I wish this... Me too. I wish this season had been 20 episodes and we could have had a lot more of their therapy. This is what I told you that I'm afraid they're going to make the married at first sight mistake. Yeah. You can't get away from the therapist. That's the interesting part. As people learn about themselves and grow mm-hmm. and all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, my friend. We've said That's it all. It. It's all been said. We've left oh. nothing on the table. No, we haven't other than Ed sucks. Asuelu sucks. <laughs> And Jovi sucks now. Angela's maybe redeemable. <laughs> and Jovi sucks now. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. All right. So next week's the finale, guys. We'll have you covered with it. Don't forget that we cover Sister Wives only yes. on Little Miss Recap Extra. So you Patreon can or join. Or Apple Podcast. Yep. You can join Patreon. You can join Supercast. Or you can go to Apple, open up the show on Apple Podcasts, and there's a button right there, subscribe. So you can yes. do that. Also, reminder, friends, if you do go on to Patreon and you choose to join free, you get bupkis. <laughs> yeah. You get what yeah. you pay for there. Yeah. I don't know why they did that. It's so stupid. It is so stupid. You go but to our Patreon so and, and this little button pops up, join for free. Well, that's fine. Right. But you get none of the content. No. So. You, you might get the occasional message that Amy puts out. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Occasionally. I mean, if you like messages, great. Great. but you, you can, can sign up to get more yeah if you really like emails and messages i will give you the password to my hotmail account and you can be the one who manages all the spam i get <laughs> there we go there we go yeah. also if you like messages by amy you can jump into backdoor friends which is yes, our facebook group, us. which is a lot of fun we're almost at 600 people i know this is crazy it's crazy and three crazy. weeks ago, we were psyched to be at 300. I know. This is so crazy. So it's so great. get in there. We do um, Sister Wives live watch threads there. Mm-hmm. We'll do Married at First Sight threads in there. So we do we do have fun. It's a pretty supportive place. And and it's a really lovely place. We've had people come, you know, to share with the group, you know, big, 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 yeah. sad things happening in their lives. And just yep. to see how everybody supports each other. This yep. is what I love about the internet is that. Me too. You know. You it's what really I like meet- about Facebook when it works well. Yeah. Yeah. People talk about how terrible Facebook is and I'm like, well then you're you have the wrong people you're in your life. You're not doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any drama on Facebook. No, me either. Mm-mm. I see my friends' kids and we talk shit about reality stars. Yeah. It's great it for works. me. It works. It works. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. You could follow Amanda and I on Instagram. Our handles are in the show notes. And um yeah, we'll see you next week with the finale. Yes, we will. Take care, Thanks. everyone. Bye bye.